All right. Trav, <laughs> we're back. back. Sandcast Podcast is alive, people. I know we've been putting out episodes, but we haven't been in the studio. <laughs> Travis has been carrying me while I've been abroad. And uh, it's been a shit show. <laughs> in, I mean, good way, bad way, I don't know. Depends who you are. <laughs> um, but we've been all over the place. Yeah. I guess proper uh, world tour beach volleyball life, right? Yeah. We've covered a lot of ground. I mean, you've covered a lot of ground. Yeah. You were gone for a long time. I was time. gone for a long I didn't go that far. I stayed in Europe the whole time. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I mean, Turkey's far, though. Like, Turkey's pretty far east. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know about east. It's kind of south of... Well, Turkey's in Asia. Part of it. It's on the... Yeah, it's part of it. Isn't it like half... Like half Istanbul half? is actually the border, like the... Okay. Bosphorus River? Okay. I don't know. I'm not good with that stuff, but <laughs> I think the Bosphorus River in Istanbul separates Asia and Europe. Okay. So, um, yeah, you did make it. Yeah. You're in Western Asia. Right, right, right. <laughs> it was nice, too. It looked beautiful. It was re- Well, the venue wasn't, so we were, like, at our hotel. We pull up, we're yeah. like, wow, okay. All right, it's a challenger. We didn't really want to be here, but... Right. Damn, this is nice. We're, like, the garden on the cliffs and the crystal blue water and, like, sick little cove. Yeah. If you saw my Instagram video of I the did. bird attacking Trevor. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, but then we get in the shuttle, or taxi, because the shuttle was a shit show. Heard that. And uh, 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes we're driving, and it just gets worse and worse as we get further away. It was away. that far? It was, depends on what time of the day, but yeah, it okay. was like at least 30 minutes. Jeez. But that wasn't. So there was like four main draw hotels. It, it, you know, it was a shit show. You heard. <laughs> yeah. We ended up getting moved to the closer one. Um, so it wasn't too bad. But it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't. It, it got worse as we got closer yeah. to the venue. Put it that way. <laughs> the venue looked pretty, though. Um, it was all right. It was like a, yeah, it was a pretty nice beach. Um, the setup was, the, the stadium court was kind of cool. For a smaller yeah. stadium, it was, it was a cool setup yeah. to play at night. Sand wasn't great, but you can't really see that on TV. It looked pretty jumpy. It was jumpy, but it was also just bottomed out. Like, it wasn't terribly deep when you're playing, but then, like, yeah, it bottomed out in some places. So people are, like, skinning their knees and all that. Um, So that wasn't great. But but then, like, the, you know, medical tent was on, like, gravel and dirt. Okay. (laughs) Cars are driving by and blowing dirt in your face. (laughs) Like, it was, like, kind of average in that sense. But... Um, I also, we had, I, I played the worst match of my life against Netherlands, yeah. I think. So we got dead last and that's probably why I <laughs> didn't like the venue yeah. as much. <laughs> the venue always, it all depends on how you finish, right? Yeah. Your I whole think, vibe, oh, Turkey sucked. Yeah. It's terrible. I think one of the truest ways to tell if you really liked a place, because this is how it was with golf, mm. where if you played a terrible round of golf and you liked the course... You're like, that course is legit. Right, right, right. So if you played terrible at a place and you still said, I would go back to play there, mm-hmm. then it's probably pretty good. Right, that's a good and point. And you can tell if a venue's really shitty if you played great and you're like, I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that venue wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> terrible start to the trip. Did, like, but Turkey's beautiful. Going into that match, though, did you guys know, like... Well, going into Turkey in general, did mm-hmm. you know what you had to do? Because I know that you and Trevor, you, I mean, you're not like going beautiful mind, A-Rob status with the points. Yeah, we try not to, <laughs> to go there, even though we probably should. Um, no, we knew, though. We knew, uh, well, it was possible because you didn't know how the yeah. other teams would do. Right. So it's like, oh, you get a, there's no 17th, right, in Challengers? Or there uh, is in Challengers, not in Elites. Yeah. Whatever. We had yeah. to get. Out of pool and maybe win the first one to like really solidify we're okay for world champs kind of okay. thing. Um, and we went what like 36 38 or something with it's Spain in the first set. Year, yeah. So I was like, all right, we're battling. They're a good team. Ended up losing and we should have won that set. Uh, and then lose the match. We're like, oh, all right, well, it's all right. You know, it's a good team. We went that the distance. Yeah. And then like, okay, Netherlands, let's. You know, make sure we take care of it. Yeah. I think, like, that day I realized, like, oh, wait, this is modified pool play. Like, this is it. Like, we get one match. (laughs) And um, so, yeah. But it just didn't feel like... I think I'm noticing it over time that 
coming off last season, like playing the Olympics, mm -hmm. Manhattan Beach, all these big ones that are like so fulfilling for me and like scare me a little bit. Yeah. Like going to Turkey, second match on the world tour, or I guess we played Rosarito, but second match, a team that we don't know. Yeah. It was just like hard to get up for it. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you're in your head like, hey, you have to win this. Yeah. And then you get out there and it's like, oh, this, like, I don't feel good. I'm not playing good. Like, this isn't, I can't see basically is what, what it came down to for yeah. me. I had like no rotation in my back and I was getting under every set and they were just blocking angle every time. And I was like, mm, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to hit angle again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or actually, I was like, I'm going to hit angle, I see the block, but I'm going high hands. And then I hit it like six inches lower than I thought I was hitting it. Right. I was like, now I just look like a complete idiot. And Mark's big. I mean, he's, he's almost, big. He's it almost wasn't, seven feet. Not for World Tour, though. It's, it's not a huge block. He's long, too. Yeah, he's long. He, he's a big block, but not when you played it with the Stoyanovskis and the yeah. Moles and even like Theo, and it wasn't like a huge block. And it's not like he's making giant moves. Like right. I could kind of see him, but I was just for whatever, playing terrible. <laughs> and uh, and they played well too. Like yeah. when we finally did pull some some strings and played a little better than they made a play or something. It's just like demoralizing. We're like, mm -hmm. they have everything to gain. We have everything to lose. Yeah. And then we lost. And then we're like, oh, okay. I, I didn't even look or ask for like two days. I think you probably, you were texting me actually, and I was like, all right, I'll ask Trev. I know he's calculated. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're out. I was like, well, now I'm depressed. <laughs> Good start yeah. to the trip. Yeah. Like, complete <laughs> joke of a start to the year. And then it was kind of like battling that the whole yeah. rest of the trip. Like, we played some good Bali. Mm -hmm. Had a battle with Qatar, you know, we like took down, who do we beat? We, you had a good had pretty qualifier good. in Ostrava. Yeah, we, you guys crushed McHugh and Burnett, and they were yeah. hot. Like, they were yeah. coming off a gold medal, or silver medal, in yeah. Turkey. Like, they're playing great all year. Yeah. And then Poland played pretty pretty well. They, I didn't, they're not playing that well, that team, but Rudol and Cantor. Uh, Cantor. Um, but beat them, and then we had a good battle with Qatar that, we could have, I think we, uh, it could have gone either way, easily. Yeah. I think I had one ball at the end that I That's the best I've seen you block about. in a long time. You've, you're like almost back to full-time blocking. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I, I mean, I love blocking. I love going yeah. up there, but we've been training f to not do that. Right. Um, that wasn't the plan, but yeah, like our coach was like, uh, try, here's the stats for when you're at the net versus... <laughs> Like, okay, but if we make him block better, and my defense feels good. I've been working on it for so long now, yeah. you know, and, like, the whole off season, really just focusing more on defense. Um, so it's hard for me to go away from it. But, yeah, I thought I played well that match. They went after Trevor. I've never seen a – they probably served him. They served me two balls maybe. Um, so for me it was, like, go block, right. serve, set make my impact just take felt the pressure it. off yeah try to um and it was a good match but then we lost so it's like we play we have a bad match this team careers against us and then we play good against a good team but then didn't pull it out yeah so, you know it's just like frustrating yeah but and then freaking um where were we latvia your malo yeah your malo we played a. Uh, uh, I forget you know, who played. We first actually time. went three with um, the Latvian team. The young Tox. Guys. Oh, Tox, Tox and, and, uh, and the young guy. Yeah, he's 17. It's yeah, he's really serious. good, too. Is he? Like, he got a little tight, you could tell. Like, that's why we took care of him at, in the end. Yeah. But he's a good player, and Tox was, like, feeling it in the beginning. Yeah. Like, oh, great. Here we go again. He's a good player. Tox is great, obviously. Fourth place at the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, draw Wickler, who we haven't beat, that guy. Really? Not a great draw for us. And then it's 50 degrees. <laughs> Trevor's got a <laughs> stomach that bug. <laughs> that, yeah, nobody knows that. It was 50 degrees, and then it's full downpour rain. Oh. And, and then this match started an hour and a half late. 
which like, you know, we're both playing, and it's just like, get over it, go right. play volleyball. Bro, my hands were <laughs> numb. Yeah. I couldn't, I was trying to jump serve, I couldn't hit it. It was like stinging my hands, trying to block and all that. Yeah. The ball's soaking wet, the kids aren't like wiping it off, you know? Yeah. So like, obviously same thing, we're both playing with the same ball, you can't really make an excuse. But Wickler's bombing jump serves. Ellers is bombing jump serves. Yeah. And I can't get on top of it. So it was like our shit serves versus them feeling it mm -hmm. and bombing away. And then Ellers, when I do get touches, he's blowing up my hands that I can't even feel. Yeah. And I've so seen your we hands didn't turn purple qualify. too when we get out of the yeah, water. You've seen and it. You're just like, it's a, it's a shaded yeah. purple. Yeah, so 50 I've never degrees in the tank top in rain. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Um, but yeah, so that and Vickler's freaking good. He's good. He's unbelievable. Yeah, I think he has one of my favorite arms. Just that really good arm. Whip noodle snap thing he's got going on. It's it's clean. It's yeah. like a real. It's like kind of like when you look at like uh, Taylor's arm, mm -hmm. his arm, maybe Chris Solnikov maybe kind of has that. Yeah. Where it's just a, compact. Put TJ DeFalco up there too. The Falco, yeah. I mean, he's mostly a, a lot of those now. indoor guys are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. But he's good. It's he's, like oh, not he's a great. Loss to be ashamed. Of. For sure, no. Yeah, so in a qualifier, it's like, dude, those qualifiers are freaking insane. Yeah. I did. A, it was actually pretty funny. So I've been writing for Volleyball World a little bit, and after your Mala, um, so a team from the qualifier has won every Elite 16 so far. Either the men or the women. So really? Rosarito was um, Katya Stam and Racist Schoon, Netherlands. Came right. out now they're the number one team in the world. Um, they are now? Yeah. They had an off few tournaments though, right? They did. And uh, they might have gotten past because of world champs. They took like ninth. Yeah. Um, but then, what was the next Elite 16? It was, I think it was, was that Estrava. Estrava, yeah. Estrava was won by Cindy Tillman and Sven Muller, Whoa. Germany. And then your mala was uh, Sam Cotafava and Pella Nikolai came mm. in the qualifier. It was funny because I was thinking about uh, the kind of pretty tense debates early in the season about yeah. how it wasn't like they needed to expand the field because it, it was too deep. Like, you guys just made the best argument possible having qualifier teams win all of them. <laughs> well, yeah, and then the point system, it's like there's no, like, the ranking is just, who knows, you know? It's, like, yeah. so random right now. I, I want to say, Trevor, someone looked up how many uh, teams ranked top 16 in the world have even played in a in main draw 16. of an Elite 16, and there was, like, six. <laughs> if you're a fan, you look at, wait, what? Yeah. These teams are top 16 in the world. They earned that. They've never played in an Elite main draw. Yeah. And now it's probably the, crazy with what? World Champs. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. And now AVP's doing the same thing. Where, yeah. Yeah, well, these guys are the... What's the tour series? Oh, it's a qualifying series. Okay. Well, then why is this team that is winning the qualifiers ranked fifth on tour? Yeah. Because they won the qualifiers. Yeah. Before you win the qualifier, it means you're in the main draw, not you're the five seed in the main draw. Right. Right. And well, it's so it's really interesting. So Dave and Rafu won Muskegon, right? Right, and which gave them a spot into Hermosa, but they just did the math, prize money, and points, and they're skipping Hermosa to go play Wapaka instead, and, and go get a what is it third place or something? Yeah, so you win, you get a third place in a pro series. Yeah, so they should just play the tour series. And that's the whole what they're time. doing. And Rafu, he was kind of mad about it. He's like, this point system's crazy, like. But I'm going to go play with Packer because it makes more sense to me. Yeah, you and can make you win, more money and yeah, more yeah. points. And if you win, like, you're splitting eight grand, which that's almost as good as winning a challenge. Flight's cheaper. Well, oh, dude, flying to Wisconsin is crazy right now, actually. Really? It hurt. More <laughs> than hard. Cali? I don't know what it'd be from Florida to California. Oh. Flying right now is freaking bonkers. I know. It's so expensive. 2800 to get to Portugal. Ooh, is it 28 Oh, man. <laughs> With the sixteen hundred dollar travel stipend, so we gotta we gotta win first round or two just to break even just to, <laughs> to play in a tournament we don't want to play in. That's what I um, 
was signed up for Espino with Tim. Mm. And I was telling you that we were like, at the time that we withdrew, we were in the teens of the qualifier, which is as high as I've ever been in a challenger. Mm -hmm. But I was just doing the math in my head that when I was looking at flights, I had a $1,500 flight. And I was like, I need to go play like Mexico's ones in the first round, right. which is at the moment a dream draw mm-hmm. of, a, of a challenger. And then I'd play into someone like really freaking good. I was like, so I got to win two matches I should lose in straight right. sets just to get to like guaranteed to be 800 bucks maybe, which would put me down 700. And then you factor in hotels. Like I'm guaranteed to lose around like two grand. You have to career to break even. Yeah, career. I was like, or like, I could absolutely career. stay home. Play Denver and Wapaka, like hang out with Delaney and like I'm gonna Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's, it's wacky. And there's a lot of conversation on the world tour with everybody, just on the buses and everyone, you know, I'm just hearing it. Mm-hmm. Everyone's kinda mumbling and grumbling about it. nobody's happy. Weirdly, like fans aren't really showing up on the world tour either. Yeah. I don't know, I, I guess like there's not, they're not all new stops, so maybe it's just like the marketing and team and, yeah. you know, it, it is a different, it's a changing of of the the whole team with Elite 16s and stuff, but, you know, post-COVID, there's not like player parties anymore and like, mm-hmm. it just feels dull and yeah. you're not like that nervous because it's not like you're playing for that much money and we're still just kind of playing for points and yeah. so it's a little, little disappointing start, but I also think it's their first year, so, like, I just hope they see what's going on and make yeah. some switches, like, because it's not a great direction, I think. Yeah. Although the stream's been great. It's Well, that's what's so interesting, is that, so, Volleyball World reportedly had a record viewership for World Champs, and the numbers were, like... I'm having trouble believing it. And that's what... And I always, I run this through, every time I see information like that, I run it through the Kent Steff is bullshit filter. Uh And I texted Kent, and I was like, what do you think of this? And he's like, well, anytime you see the word impressions and engagement, you know that there's some serious spin. Of course, because, well, how long have they been uh, recording impressions and engagement? (laughs) Right. And now we're all on a different platform than we were all the other years. Yeah. So I don't know how many people actually viewed it because and Theo said the same thing when I, I put that post up and I was like I mean apparently it was a record viewership right I even though I'm commentating like I have no idea I can't see the numbers that was the lowest I've ever seen and Theo in terms said of it's fans crazy that that many people watched it when there was no one there in person dude their third place match was empty pretty much empty yeah yeah and that was with like Brazil seemed to travel pretty well like George and Andre had a decent right and Vitor and uh, Renato. Like, the final nice. looked pretty final good. Solid. solid. but, like, they've packed that stadium. Like, yeah. Phil and Misty and Kerry and them, I think they won world champs in that stadium okay. in, oh, whatever, nine or seven or something. And there's photos of it packed. Really? It was huge. And, huge but stadium. we were in Rome a few years ago, and, and, you know, there's a ton of foot traffic. Everyone's yeah. packed in. They packed the stadium this year. Was not much foot traffic, yeah. dude. Why do you think there wasn't that is? even sponsors on the you mentioned, signs? Yeah, because you mentioned even your jerseys. There, there was, was no. That's the first FIVB sponsor. I've ever played in with no title sponsor on the jersey. Yeah, and it was a world championship. Like, what do you what do you think's happening? Like, why do you think this is happening? I don't know. I just assume that that's your biggest selling point is that logo, mm-hmm. right on the shirt. Because that's, I remember uh, I wish I knew. in Hamburg was the marketing Aldi, Aldi everywhere. Right. And Hamburg was packed. Oh, for you sure. Were, you, you were there, you know. Oh, those are the greatest matches I've ever played in. Like, and what I do you lost. think, like, 2019 to 22, like, why, why were the world championships such a different vibe, do you think? Because Italy's got a good, like, beach yeah. volleyball tradition. <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think, and I've always said, I don't think our sport or anyone's doing a good job of promoting the actual entertainment product, which is the athletes. Yeah. Like, you hear it all the time, but nobody actually does anything about it or, like, 
you know, they'll do like cheesy uh, social media posts and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but they should be promoting like making, creating these superhero characters like the Anders Mole and Qatar. They have their, they're not just any other team. Like they have right. a certain swag to them. Like, yeah. Like a huge swag. Like mm-hmm. this guy freaking tells me that he doesn't eat vegetables because lions don't eat vegetables. Who said like that? when I, Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the barbecue. <laughs> you, eat, he's a, he, you eat vegetables? No, I don't eat those, man. Lions don't eat them. <laughs> I love I'm Sharif. Like, Damn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and he's serious. <laughs> Just meat, rice, That's maybe. Amazing. And then. I mean, his partner, ever like that team has such a cool story. Yeah, Adrian, the way that he walks around mm-hmm. tour, being through, having gone through what he's gone through. There's just so many good storylines that like fans would show up for. Yeah, they're not telling it. They're yeah. not telling that story. And then the marketing alone, like when I'm driving around Rome, biking, all that for days, I'm not seeing signs and yeah. promotions and all that. Um, uh, I'm super biased when I say this, but I think all this lower level, build up the lower levels um, stuff is just completely watering down the top level of sport, which is the entertainment value. No one, no offense to qualifier players, but nobody cares. Yeah. NBA is the most watched thing in the world. Nobody watches the D League. Right. Nobody <laughs> watches the developmental leagues in soccer. Yeah. Every, you know, baseball. They all have tiers to get mm-hmm. up to the top. No one gives a shit. Those guys don't make money. They get up to the top, right to the top. Yeah. Just one little jump. Boom. Now you're making money. Why? Because you're entertaining fans. People want to watch you play. And we're not even capitalizing on that product, which is kind of weird because it seems the exact opposite of what Finn Taylor said he was trying to do when he came on the podcast and yeah. when he made elite 16 like that's yeah. i believe that's what they were trying to do but somehow it backfired and they're doing the exact opposite and i think they're chasing i'm assuming the financial model in the past didn't work of like really just building this really entertaining cool product and spending a bunch of money and then hoping that the money comes in later mm-hmm. that didn't work obviously so they've changed from that and gone to more of the donald son where he's, you know, build up AVP first, AVP next, memberships, right. uh, entry fees, whatever, you yeah, know. Trickle up. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then now it's the challengers where, like, the top guys are, like, we're being forced, everyone's being forced to play down. Yeah. And it's just, like, this isn't even worth it for us. Like, right. it's not fun anymore. And then if the top teams are playing down and not enjoying it, how are the fans going to enjoy that? Yeah. Um, but maybe it's more f- sustainable financial model for FIVB they're like okay we put on all these challengers we don't lose money yeah that's good we're a business <laughs> right so you can't blame them for that mm-hmm. um but maybe we're just in a transition period of them like okay we got to find a way to have this foundation of f- steady finances but also build up this other product but now we're we're stuck on the found foundation right. level this year and the the actual product itself that we're trying to sell to fans in the world, like to grow the sport is taking a hit. Yeah. I'm hoping that's just temporary. And that, that the, you know, the tours are aware of it and wanting to change it um, and not like, well, this is kind of working as a business model a lot better, so screw it, we'll stay with that. Because yeah. then all the athletes are going to be screwed. And I think the lower level athletes aren't, they're kind of feeling good about it right now because, mm-hmm. like, dude, we're on tour. Like, we're, <laughs> we're the top-level players. Right. But then they're going to realize there's nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. Like, what am I fighting for? Like, you're going to be five years into your career, like, we're still right here playing yeah. challengers and fighting to maybe get to the, these top levels. And uh, I think that just, like, it's just not worth all the hard work eventually. Like, you're going to, I don't know. At least for me, I'm, I'm in the weird place right now where I'm just like, I, I'm a big game hunter for myself, you know? Yeah. That's the only thing that gets me going anymore. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't need to travel tour and just play events just right. to play. I want to check boxes off on my bucket list of career 
things. Like, right. obviously winning Elite 16s is on the table, and that's huge, world champs. Um, but, you know, those big matches, like the one that I had in Hamburg when I played world champs, like that's yeah. what Theo and Kame should have experienced, and they did not, Yeah. you know? Um, so I don't know. Transition phase, I guess. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> Every year of my career, we've had to make something up. Like, well, yeah, but right. next year maybe we're, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. What's your perspective on it? Well, so I've been, I mean, one of the reasons that I'm skipping Espino and I'm not really going to go after challengers for a while and I'm just going to stay local is that and this is I think a credit to the AVP is that the AVP is, is now putting on financially um, and competitively a, a better product mm. where I look at a challenger and if I say I could either go to Wapaka which is a tour series AVP or I can go to Espino which is a challenger and if I win Wapaka I get eight grand and if I win Espino which is just out of the question. Like, it's out of the realms of possibility for mm -hmm. me and Tim to win Espino. Uh, we'd get 10. It's like, all right, well, I, if I perform, like, at a decent level, I could put myself in a position to win Wapaka. Right. If I career, I could put myself in a position to lose in the second round of the qualifier. <laughs> right. <laughs> Espino. Yeah. You know? Right. So then the AVP. What I'm wondering, and I think that the AVP, I don't mind... The three-tier system, I don't really mind the AVP's point system as much as everybody else does. Because I'm just, like, a believer, and we've talked about it a lot, that, like, no matter what the point system is, like, the best teams are going to get where right. they're supposed to be. Yeah. I think that when the AVP originally set this new point system, they said it was based off of prize money. Because they're doing, like, international, like, you get points on the AVP for every event. Yeah, I guess I don't really understand that. hasn't necessarily been true, because you could play a CBVA Open and win, like, a towel and a ball and 100 bucks and get, like, 700 points on the AVP. Oh, really? Which is a lot. Yeah. Um, but, y'all, I, I just hate the... You're now incentivizing your top pros to go play down. Well, to chase points or to... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot a of teams... AVP, are, not a ton, because it's, like... It's, you know, it's not, like, a... It's a... You're not pushing out finishes. The AVP is just based on a window now. So it's just right. however many tournaments you want to play, you play. Yeah. And it's so like you and Trev, like, you're fine. You don't have to play down because you have your, your pro series tournaments yeah. to play. Which is only three gold series. You guys are going to play the pro series anyway. Right. And the prize money's okay. Mm -hmm. And the points are good. So you guys, like, you're not going to play down. But the guys, like, at my level, it could incentivize us to play down. Like, Rafa and Dave, they did the math. And they said, well, we have a better chance of making money and getting points. We're going to go to Wapaka instead of Hermosa. Right. And so in that sense, yeah, it incentivizes people to play down if they're more interested in the money and the points than the right. competition. Whereas if that were my choice, like if I had qualified in Muskegon, we were, right. I think, a match out yeah. from doing so, um, I would have absolutely chosen Hermosa because mm. I just want to play against the best people possible and play right. those matches that you were talking about that like, right. gets you jacked up. I guess I just see it as a different tour. Yeah. Like they're trying to blend in this other tour into the top tour. And players are like, well, I'll just go play on this other tour. Mm -hmm. And now we have, it's like, well, why are all the resources going to this other tour? People are making their whole beach volleyball living off that tour. Why don't we just make the top tour better? Yeah. It's like, do we, is it really your job to let everybody play and everybody make a, and I'm always thinking like <clears throat> top, top, like, right. what's the best product? What's going to get us closer to ESPN? Like, yeah. a pop, more popularity and all that. So I'm super biased. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm just like... Well, I've been thinking about it a lot that, you know, there are so many quote-unquote professional beach volleyball players. Oh, I just right? saw one at uh, the Poke Shop today. His, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Gabby, look, a professional beach volleyball player. <laughs> His shirt said it was a CBVA thing or something. Yeah. It was like, kings of the beach or whatever and then on the bottom was pro player <laughs> you know you're probably it was like 510 sure. like you know um, i was like the, oh look like, it's a beach volleyball pro <laughs> yeah. so like if you think about it i mean there are between men and women there are literally hundreds of just americans who can claim to be a professional beach volleyball player right? not but, good but since the 70s there have been 500 nba players right Around that number. Mm. Like, that's not a lot. Right. 
So, like you said, like we've spread it pretty thin, and I, I think you know I'm not at the top of the AVP, and I like more along the lines, your lines, where yeah, I do think you you should cater to the top. And we always talk about a lot of players like, oh, we need more events, more events, more events. What if we had like twelve big ones? And well, I think we should cater to the guys who have been playing this sport for eight years as a full time job. Yeah, freaking putting in all that work sacrifice every everything you know they're playing for food on the table that's entertaining to a fan right yeah. you want to see people playing for something like yeah. big special yeah not like well this guy has a side job and he likes volleyball so he plays <laughs> you know three days a week and uh he's good at it so he comes out and plays and look he got a good finish like sweet yeah like you don't have to pay the you don't it's not your job to make a tour to a pro tour to, yeah. so that these people can call themselves pros. Yeah. Uh, that's an amateur tour, and it's great. Like they, sh- It's great to make places for people to play like that. It's called AAU. <laughs> American <laughs> Amateur what? Something like that, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. I think that the AVP, for like its first year, is doing a good job. I was really impressed with the setup in Muskegon. I would like... All the Tour Series players were pretty unsure what it was going to be like. I've heard the Tour Series is amazing. It was great, honestly. That's um, that's the problem. Fans, <laughs> but fans showed People up. People are going to the pro events and saying, this is shit. Yeah. And then going to the Tour ones, obviously the standards are lower, and saying, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, we're, we're running these top-level pro events. Yeah. It's and like, well, one, then where's the I top think teams? Muskegon is a venue... Is better. It's real beach. Mm. It was beautiful. Right. Whereas you know you're at a bar in New Orleans, which has its its virtues. Well, and it's going to rain every year on that weekend. <laughs> it's going to rain. Well, and hope then, it doesn't rain next time. Yeah, then, <laughs> Fourth then you have time Austin, in a row. You know, in Austin's, you're at it's too expensive re- to play at the good cart. venue. Yeah. So we had. So I get like it's cheaper. Fifth it's of the more price economical. to play in a, a, a weekend softball league field. Yeah. So you get Muskegon, like pretty venue. Um, a really solid beach volleyball tradition in Michigan, actually, which is interesting. Right. Um, and then I think what's really important is that they put it all on a weekend. And on just Saturday, just Sunday? Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Tw- it was a 2014 draw. Like, I played four matches in one day. Oof. And which I would, I don't mind it. Like, I think if you have a 16 team draw, I think you, you put it on a weekend, you're going to get fans there the whole time. And people are going to have to play three or four matches a day, and that's just like, I think that could be some like a concession that the players can make. Right. You know, we might have to be a little bit more fit. If it works, perform. then sure. Yeah. I, I think the level of play goes down a bit, but yeah, I mean, if it if it's going to work and like yeah. bring in more fans and cut the costs, then yeah, pros can handle that. Yeah, especially if it's a sixteen teamer. I mean, like if I had won my fourth match, I would have had to play a fifth right after mm-hmm. and I was like I don't know how much I would have left for that one right <laughs> I was tired yeah no <laughs> so way maybe dude. four matches in a day is a good oh a five good is ridiculous then you're just watching <laughs> yeah like I mean, a fan doesn't want to watch that <laughs> yeah like or maybe you do but it's for the different reasons right of like, like wow okay, you made them play <laughs> for eight hours straight <laughs> look at this they're crawling around the court this is kind of funny <laughs> so I think that um Muskegon had a lot going for it. Um, and then I'll be interested to see how... I'm heading to Denver. I leave tomorrow. Mm. Um, I'll be interested to see how Denver goes. Denver's actually, I would say, Sounds about as cool. strong as AVP San Francisco was, the field. Because there's no conflicts or anything. So, I mean, you got, like... And I think people have wisened up, and they're like, the points are good, and the money's good, and it's pretty close. So I'm going to play. The fact that we're calling that good nowadays is sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly am, like, super intrigued in all these stops. And, like, man, I want to go play in those. Yeah. But it's just so backwards. And, like, if I go win it, what does that do for me? I get some of these imaginary points that I love. <laughs> Sick. I'm going to freaking <laughs> check off a bucket list. I'm yeah. like, I got 500 points once. Whatever, yeah. or whatever points they made up. Uh, or I'm not going to call that. You, you, didn't, you didn't win an AVP. For winning that event, sorry. Yeah, you're not, an, been, a- you're not an AVP winner. To watch the debate. Oh go my on. god! And it it was so funny, man. That's like the biggest thing. Like, if, 
if you get to the point in your career where you win an AVP, you can hang your hat on that for the rest of your life. Yeah. If you win an AVP tour, you have to be good to do that. Yeah. You cannot hang your hat on it. You cannot say you won an AVP. Yeah. At all. <laughs> Not even close. That's like saying you qualify. Those are, that's the qualifying series. Yeah. The tour series should not be called the tour series. The tour is a random word that they just made up. <laughs> this is the qualifier, yeah. the qualifying series, like the WSL calls it, yeah. because that's what it is. Yeah. Not trying to trick fans and right. make people feel better than they are about themselves. Yeah. So it's just not. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Rafu won a real one, didn't he? he Rafu did. won San Fran. He did. Rafu was an AVP champ. Yeah. Not for this one. Ask him. I freaking love that guy. There's no way yeah. AVP uh, Rafu is claiming this one as an AVP win. Yeah, I because I did a story on it. And I asked him. I he like, wouldn't claim it even if he didn't have San Fran. Yeah, I think Rafu knows. He he knows what's what. Um, I do think that Denver, with how strong that field is, if you win Denver, that would be about. The same as winning San Fran. Well, San Fran's been the one debated and, and that's been the one event. Debated. Yeah, and that so, that was legitimately on the world tour. It was just overshot, so everybody missed right. it. And so that tells you a lot. Yeah, you're like, well, it's close to San Fran. Well, everyone's been trying to demote San Fran. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But that's like roughly the the quality. I think calling it the qualifying series. I think Taylor and them were were signed. They were gonna go, and then I just talked to him. And, to Denver? I think they're pulling out, or, or they already did. Okay. I think they did. I, I don't remember seeing them on the entry list. Yeah. I'd like it if someone pulled out, because there was a wild card you so I got bumped into the qualifier for the qualifiers. Oh, you're in the, so you're in the quality of yeah. the quality tour? Yeah. Quality tour series? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about it either. I was like, oh, yeah, like, when, I mean, me and JM were, like, the 12 seed in wherever we were first, Muskegon. Like, great. Like, I mean, main draw for this one. And then I didn't expect, like, Lobman and Partain, Ed and Chase, Burek. And Burek has, like, pro- frozen points from five years well, ago. Well, anyone that's not on the world tour, why would you not? If I wasn't on the yeah. world tour, I'd probably be playing in all of them. Yeah. Why not? Um, that's why I'm curious why Taylor and Taylor pulled out. Well, they got a really long um, stretch after that. They're going to go Portugal, Hermosa, Portugal, Morocco. Morocco. Fort Lauderdale, Atlanta, like there's no Ooh. weekends off for them. Okay, so that it'd makes be sense. kind of done. that's brutal. Yeah, to play the weekend before, add yeah. one on there. Yeah, at least yeah. it's close. But yeah, that makes sense that they would pull out. Yeah. Anyway, that's my sorry, quality guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, tour guy, tour <laughs> yeah. series. Well, I mean, I, such I, a hater right now. It was so funny, man. In the just like around Muskegon, talking to the players. Because there were, I think, 12 players on the guy side, I, don't, I think, and I think 15 of 16 women who that was like their quote unquote first main draw. Um, and I had Deanna Kraft on who it's took, not a, who took it's third not a main draw. And, and that's what. It's a qualifier. That was the debate. A lot, anyone who has sort of kind of grown up with the old system was like, nope. Can't can't take it. Of but, course. The new now, people the are like, well, it's, like, a, yeah. it's a tour if it stopped now. Yeah. But Deanna Kraft, who took third. So that's what the fans are saying, too. Yeah. You know? And But she took third in Muskegon, which was technically her first main draw, and she didn't count it. And she said, no, her most because well, she has first one. big aspirations for her career. <laughs> Someone else who's just like, no, I'm going to have to take this one and pretend like it's way bigger than it is. Yeah. The reality is, go walk into a player's tent at a Gold Series event and ask everybody in the tent. There's your answer. Yeah. That's where the answer should come from, yeah. is the top, right? Yeah. If they say, yeah, okay. I think it's like, I would say it is an accomplishment and something to be proud of. But For sure. But not... I mean, that's a... When you look at the U.S. as a whole, volleyball, if you win a tour series event, you're a legitimate top player in the country. Yeah. And you have the potential to play in main draws elite top american main draws like you're that good yeah that's something to hang your hat on yeah for sure it's like everyone like I'm, i qualified that's like a big bucket list in your career all of us everyone's first main draw they qualified for was like boom i earned that yep. yes they qualified moment. for the main draw yeah that's what you're doing
maybe even a little better because you have to win it. You, qualifier, you, you can get like top four, you know? Yeah. So, so it's better than that. Yeah. But you can't really stretch beyond that. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's cool that people, I like the fact that they do make it a big main draw on tour series, but not everyone gets paid. Oh, really? Yeah, so you have to get ninth or better to get paid. Okay. Which I dig, because then it, it it makes people feel like they're part of something, but people, the right players are, are making money. Right. And I can say that I was out of the money mm. from Skeegan. Right, yeah. And I'm still saying that that's a good thing. Right, so right, So it's right. unbiased. There we go. <laughs> I know. You always have to take advantage when you're in that on the other side of, yeah. uh, like right now with the World Tour stuff, like mm -hmm. beginning of the year we were 10th. Right, and we yeah. slipped all the way to twenty eighth, wherever we're at now. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, now I can talk because I'm not that t that guy that's sitting. Yeah, of course you're saying that you're sitting tenth right. in the world. I still agree with everything I said in the beginning of the year, <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm in a position to be screwed trying to get back. Actually, yeah. no, because the system makes it so easy to fluctuate. Get one good finish and you're back. But anyway, yeah. yeah. So what's like what's the solution? So right now, I mean, when we had Finn Taylor on the podcast, for example, he was yeah. like, we're going to have events every weekend of the year. And for the most part, I mean, the season started out in, in Mexico in March, and there will be challengers to be played in late November. Right. Um, but is that like, would you rather have it condensed, bigger events with less events, with bigger prize money? So like say you take three challengers and you just absorb them. You're like, instead of doing those three in Portugal, Morocco, and wherever, why don't we just do one big Elite 16 in Agadir? I think the Elite or 16... like an Elite 32. I think the whatever. Elite 16 tour should be the tour. That's it. This is the world tour. Yeah. Yes, there's a challenger series. You should follow it. It's really cool. You mm -hmm. get to see the teams battling out to try to get to the top. That's it. Like, there's a top yeah. tier. So it is with surfing. I'm a huge fan of surfing. Yeah. Not because it's the most entertaining. It's a terrible spectator sport, actually. <laughs> but they set it up in a good way. Obviously, I like surfing, but they set it up in a good way that it's interesting. I look at the qualifying. Who's coming up next? Like, who's the up-and-comer? Who's going to win this qualifying series and get boosted up to the main draw for the next season? Yeah. It's sweet. Like, so it's you, awesome. So and, oh, like who's at the, the back of this one? Like, they're going to have to, they're going to fall off. Yeah. It's it's really cool. It's really interesting. Do you like the uh, the promotion relegation? I like that. Element? I don't think it has to be that. You can set the points up in a way where the top challenging teams get to the back of the sixteen or make it twenty four. I, I don't I think like that. Yeah. But then they said, I mean, that's what they have in place. But the points are off, and then the scheduling was off in the beginning, so it, they had to do the qualifier thing. Now it's elite twelve. Oh, wait, we're going to throw in a wild card, so it's the Elite 11. <laughs> and then the points are going to fluctuate so much that people who have never played in main draws and elites are yeah. now in the top somehow. Um, but if they set up the points to where the challengers actually get you to, you're going to relegate the back of the, the elites by winning challengers, then it's perfect. Yeah. But now it's if you win challengers, you relegate the, the fifth team in the world. Legitimately. Yeah. Like, you're sitting fifth in the world. One of the best top five teams in the world. And someone wins a qualifying series event, and they just pass you. Yeah. What? <laughs> if someone, if they did that, if they started doing this and surfing, I would stop watching. I'd be like, this is stupid. Yeah. Like, what? This person's a no-name. How did they just pass Carissa Moore? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Cause just because she didn't surf? Right. She decided to rest because she's actually like structuring her schedule and everything based on like being the best surfer in the world. Yeah. Well, now, well, maybe she should go play in these qualifying events. Like, why? Why do we want Chris Moore to go surf in these? She's the Olympic and world champion. We don't want her to go play in these lower level events, but the point system is making it so she has to. Right. And she's sitting here like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Oh, so you don't get passed by qualifying series players. Yeah. I just think it's stupid. I, as a fan, I would s probably stop paying attention. Yeah. That's one thing that I love. I love the way the AVP structured it, where the best four from the, we'll rename the tour series, the qualifying series for the purpose Thank of you. the Sorry. podcast. Sorry, everyone. So the AVP qualifying series, mm -hmm. I love that every one of them has 
uh, like a, an event that it's related to. Mm. So you win Denver. That's pretty you cool. Get yeah. Into Fort Lauderdale. It's, yeah, you it's like win, a qualifier, but it's an actual Atlanta. tournament. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's like the promotion. But element. you shouldn't be the. You shouldn't get the points for winning this qualifying event. To be a, what is it? it I heard it was like fifth. Or third. If you win, if you if win, you, it's a third. If you win a, if you win a qualifying series event, you, it's a. You get a third place third in a pro series. In a pro event, in the top tier event. Yeah. You get a third place. Is anyone else hearing this? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I've never really. So like, in, how is surfing points? How does that work? Is there a point system? Yeah. Or is it, Same thing. Yeah. You get a certain amount, ten thousand points for a first. You know, seven thousand five hundred for a second, all the way down. Yeah. Um, they changed it up this year to where they have a mid-season cut. Okay. But their main draw is their. It's called the championship series or tour. Is a is set for the year, based on last the last season. So some some teams get relegated, or sorry, some individuals get relegated from the bottom from the qualifying series. The other people jump up okay whatever I don't, I don't know how many spots maybe six or something um but now they have a mid-year cut so halfway through the year at 16 everyone behind 16 is off tour and now huh. now halfway through the year there's only six i think it's 16 obviously i don't follow that closely but now there's just 16 like from now until the end of the year there's only 16 teams remaining okay or, or surfers yeah um which i don't I don't know if that's necessary. As a fan, I'm like, eh, you didn't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wanted to see some of those surfers surf still. <laughs> right. Like, they had a bad start to the year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's it's just separate. Yeah. And then they, they call the qualifying series this. It's it's actually really brilliant. They call it the qualifying series. <laughs> 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 I don't know how they came up with it. <laughs> Instead of being like, Pro surfers series, <laughs> top pros series, <laughs> something like to confuse fans. Like, wait, what? <laughs> tour. Wait. Okay, it's the AVP tour. So yeah. if it's the tour series, it must be the AVP <laughs> players. Yeah. All right. So why don't we go see this? <laughs> wait, where's all the top players? <laughs> and this is the pro <laughs> series, so it's got to be the pros. But wait, why weren't the pros playing in the tour series? Yeah. Maybe it's like a qualifying series or something. I don't know. <laughs> I like the promotion relegation element of sports. Yeah, I think it's sweet. I think the premier. I think it's what, the Premier League that yeah. does it in soccer. I yeah. think it's awesome. I'm wondering. And you and you give these teams a shot. You know, yeah. it's not like one shot and you're the bounce. It's right. like, hey, give them a four chunk. You know, four events to yeah. like give it a shot because it could be these young guys where the first one they're just like starstruck. You know, you get four shots yeah. at it, and then if you can't break through, then you'll drop back kind yeah. of thing. I think it's cool. I do, too. And I like that. Uh, that's I really like about the AVP is that the qualifier teams are actually performing in main draws now because they're not off the heels of, a, of four matches in a single day. Yeah, totally. And so now, like, they're coming in. You get to see rested. their best yeah, you, volleyball. Yeah, playing real volleyball. Yeah, exactly. And which I think is awesome. And these teams, like a lot of these qualifying, that's where the top players come from. Mm-hmm. Event, you know, at some point, one of those top players comes through, and they can actually take down a top seed. But you can't have them coming off of playing yeah. four matches the day before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's great too. Yeah. So I think there are good things happening. There, there are there, good things there in good, there. There are good things if happening. If the tour, is, if everyone's behind the scenes and. Laying it all out, picking the good things, yeah. and we make some changes. I'm happy. I think we're in a good place. Yeah, and I think I don't know if we're doing that though. I think if like one I thing I also want to hear. I just want some answers. Like, yeah, I don't need to blame anyone. I'm just like, are we all seeing this? <laughs> yeah. You know. And then, well, one thing I think. So I think the AVP's got like, I I like the the qualification system. Whether you want to call it something different or not whatever um and i i really like what volleyball world does with how open they are with talking to the players mm. i think that the just the amount of open calls that they have is well something. that's the reason you make a players association yeah 
And I think that that's one thing I think that the uh, the AVP players could probably push to do a better job of. Yeah. No, I agree. Totally. Because, like, I think, like, if you got together with, like, April and Alex and Trevor and Taylor and Phil. And, I mean, we got a lot of power. Yeah. And if, players if, if like, you came to the AVP and you said, hey, we really like this promotion relegation system. We don't think you should call the tour series. The tour series. <laughs> call the qualifying series. Like, these are the things we want to see. Like, here are the great elements. Here are the elements we would like to tweak. I, they might be receptive to it if it's pitched the right way. Yeah, totally. I think they'd be receptive to it. Yeah. If they're not, um, there's you you force them to be receptive to it, right? That's what an association does. Yeah. Um, no, I totally agree, dude. I actually think you call the tour series the qualifying series. I'm interested now. Yeah. Now I'm like, well, who's the up and comer? Who's mm-hmm. gonna win the tour qualifying series? That's awesome. Like, yeah. this if this guy goes out and wins the, give awards for that series. Honestly. This guy's player of the year of the qualifying series. Now we all get to watch him come up to the pro level, mm-hmm. the top level, and compete. And everyone's going to want to see that guy. You just created a character, you know? Yeah. And we it's fun that. to watch. We'll create, it. we'll create our own qualifying series. There we show. go. There's no... <laughs> <laughs> just to confuse more of it. They'll be like, what qualifying series? Like, what do you mean? We just made That's it a out. four-time AVP <laughs> champion right there. He's got more wins than Trevor Crabb. <laughs> Yeah. It's got tied with me, whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, what were we saying again? Uh, just how like the players could approach the oh, and um, what like and all that. Yes, I mean I think it's a great idea. I think what I've learned from being on the International Players Association is that it is a lot of work. Yeah. It's not just everyone getting together. Say, hey, we're going to be an association. We, there's a lawyer involved. Everyone right. has to pay fees. Um, a, nook, a nook. There's like, you know, a full on. There's a president. Yeah. There's a treasurer. It's there's legit. people in charge of everything. Um, there's a board now. And Madeline was running it all for free. And then we were all paying dues to get help, <clears throat> keep this lawyer on, involved. And... Uh, it's a ton of work. It was like a full-time job for her. Mm-hmm. And, and she just had to step down. And she, we had a meeting in Rome. She's like, I can't do it anymore. I need to make a living. Right. I love you guys. Like, it was great. Um, but I need to make a living. And she's also the FIVB, on the FIVB Players Commission, the head of that. So she's too busy. She can't do it. Yeah. But, like, who's going to do that for the AVP? I don't have time to yeah. create the association. And I'll be a part of it. I'll Whatever, president, whatever you want to call it, you know get it together and whatnot, but I can't, we all, we're all gonna, we're all gonna be paying fees now, the world tour players don't want to play fees, the AVP tour series players aren't gonna, you can only make a hundred bucks out there, you're not gonna pay a hundred bucks to, I don't know, it's just hard, you need someone that's like fully dedicated to it, willing to um, dedicate all their time to it, and that's the reason it's doesn't exist yeah. i think <laughs> what's funny is that like the association of volleyball professionals it be it was a union it should be it, right it, yeah. that's what it was it started yeah. out because they hated the promoters this yeah company called event concepts was running yeah. events and they were they changed the ball they weren't like being transparent about the prize money mm. they changed the rules from old school to side out they changed they were trying to change the court size and the players were like what's wrong like no right, right. And so they talked to this lawyer leonard armado who mm-hmm. represented Shaq and yep. Kareem and Ronnie Lott. And he was like, well, if you make a union and band together, like you'll have some power. And so that was the Association of Volleyball Professionals. Mm-hmm. And then now the AVP is, was for a little bit a publicly traded company. So right. it went from a union to a, a public company, and now it's like now it's a private company, which is kind of an issue. It's pretty it's, awesome it what they did. It started as a union. Yeah. 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 The association of... We're associated with... The tour. Yeah. But you're not the tour. Yeah, so it would be pretty funny if, like, <laughs> the AVP, which was a players union, became, like, the AVP players union. <laughs> right, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't have to call it AVP. Yeah. But, no, I, I think it would be amazing for our sport, and it's, like, something I want to do if I didn't sleep, you know? Like, if I... <laughs> It'd be fun. I'd be. I would, I'm also on the board of directors for USA Volleyball, and there's 
certain meetings I want to get together with the players just for that, yeah. that it's actually my voluntary role. Um, and, and I think it'd be really fun, like April, ever, like there's plenty of players that are smart enough uh, to get it done. It's just, I got to prioritize right. certain things. Yeah. But if someone, if someone stepped up and made it, I'd be on board 100% right away. Yeah. Pay whatever fee we got to pay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it could be useful because I, I think that... I think you should do it. I got plenty of free time. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah. You have like six jobs. Yeah, I slept like three hours last yeah. night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't need sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some people don't need sleep. <laughs> Man, it's, it was tough. I forgot like... Because going to Switzerland was my first time going to Europe this year. Hmm. And I forgot what just how devastating that is just to your body it can crush and, you and your mind. Yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't Bro. sleep. I slept like four and a half hours a night for like five nights. I was like, oh my god, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, our our text conversations are pretty hilarious. Just yeah. like you're like, I'm crushed. I'm like a week back. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm still not recovered. <laughs> Let's push the podcast to Wednesday. <laughs> I can't talk for an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, getting Just, back, like, I got back Monday, midnight, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, slept, like, five hours, and then jet lag got me pretty good, so I was up at, like, 5.30. Yeah. Like, I'm so tired, but I can't fall back to sleep. And then the whole day, just zombied. Yeah. No, I was like, Crushed. Man. <laughs> I need sleep. Dude. I don't, I don't think I've ever been um, as emotionally and physically drained as this last one. Okay. Granted... There's a lot more to it. Yeah. First of all, losing. Just feeling like you're not playing well and losing is emotionally draining because yeah. you put so much into it, obviously. And then Trevor got sick for two tournaments. Most people don't know that. I don't Yeah. <laughs> he got COVID for World Champs. We pulled out. So that's draining. Just being around someone who's sick right. is draining. And then he gave it to me. <laughs> so then I flew back with it, missing my family. <laughs> And I'm in the Sandcast studio for three days, <laughs> not seeing my daughter and wife, or seeing them, but through the right. the glass sliding door. And then it happened to be my wife's birthday, then Father's Day, and my birthday, all in quarantine. Yeah. And I was, dude, I'm that's, just, that's I'm a just, tough combo. I'm like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Like thinking, like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to Paris. <laughs> this is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe we just invest in Gabby's career and I, <laughs> I go stay at home dad. Yeah. The amount of times that that thought has popped into my head is uh, a little scary. Yeah. But I'm like, wait, okay. COVID, travel, losing, five, feet, five weeks away, and I got a little back tweak thing going on. All right, maybe you're not thinking from the right, uh, right. plane right now. Yeah. And I think that's just part of, like, being an athlete. That's part of pursuing something that's really freaking hard. Right. Like, there are so many times just, like, being a freelance contract writer yeah. in a sport that has traditionally had no money. You're like, I'm going to need a job next yeah. week. Yeah, I, like, look at the construction month. guys next to my house and I'm like, Why don't I do that? Are you hiring? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what your day is every time. Right. You're going to get paid on time. Yeah. I never get paid on time. And Dude, like, I just kept thinking great. about Will Montgomery, my <laughs> first partner. I think about all the time. Like, I'm seeing his videos. He's surfing, <laughs> spearfish. Me and Will, he's one of my first partners when we started to become pro. He, you know, went all in. Eventually, just retired. Like, no, nah, I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna get a job. Fireman, fireman's a great job. You get a lot yeah. of free time. And we used to surf together a lot. We got into spearfishing. Now he's like pulling into head high, stand up barrels yeah. on his free time. Like he's become elite surfer. And we're like same level. Like that. I wanted to be doing that. <laughs> and he's spearfishing, pulled up like a freaking 150-pound tuna. I'm like, dude, we were like trying to figure out how to shoot a three-prong like a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Look at this guy. He gets, knows what he's getting paid. He's got a good job. It's time yeah. off. He does what he loves. I'm like, Jesus, what yeah. am I doing? It's so funny, man. Like these thoughts come in all the time. But I know that we're not alone just because whenever I listen to podcasts with like other writers or athletes, like everyone – yeah, I mean, everyone thinks that. And people are looking at our jobs sports. like, what are you talking I about, like, dude? I want to do what you guys do. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys go play volleyball on the beach. <laughs> yeah. I get no. it. Like, what we do is amazing. But there are, like, weeks, if not months, long stretches sometimes. Yeah. Where I'm like, this makes no sense. <laughs> dude, I've waken up every day 
in pain and just like extra tired and just like questioning everything. Yeah. But then I'm like, mm, yeah, I've been here pretty much every year. There's always a point where this happens. Yeah. So let's just weather it. Yeah. And then you're going to play well and you're going to win. And you're like, God, this is amazing. Yeah. Everything's good. All it takes is like you get one good match, and the high from that good match or just a good tournament. Good tournament. You, you yeah. like have one, like me and Jake just took fourth in Switzerland, mm-hmm. which was super fun. Yeah, and that was great. Like it was packed all the time. Like everyone was just like drinking, having a great time. Like just classic like European. Yeah. Really fun beach volleyball vibes. Right. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Like I love it. And then I got on the plane. And I was like, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it goes that fast. That's just how it is. I mean, yeah, I think like what you said, when you're pursuing something difficult or tough, challenging, you get to the challenging time and it's easy to forget. You're like, oh, yeah, you wanted to challenge yourself. You wanted yeah. the challenge. Now you're just in it, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, wait for wait for your when you're when the wave lets you up uh, to, to grab a breath yeah. of air to actually like contemplate quitting or whatnot. Yeah. You know, just remember you're you're in it. It's like uh, Tom Brady was saying that guys would call him like over the years, his friends, whatever. They they win championship. They finally win championships. You know, top pro athletes, and they all like, bro, that was so fucking hard. <laughs> He's like, yep, that's what that's what I do. Yeah, like it's they're like they're surprised. They they win the championship. They're not like, yes, this is the greatest thing. They're like, dude, that was extremely hard yeah. like questioning like I don't know if that was worth doing it again right and Tom Brady's like yep like that's what I sign up for mm-hmm. every year like I go to that place and when I heard that I was like wow that's actually a really cool perspective of like you have to go there yeah. you have to do this something really you have to go to that dark place basically and get comfortable there yeah it's funny like what short term memories athletes can have oh yeah yeah, we're going to have a podcast in two weeks, and I'm going to be all just positive vibes yeah. and happy. And, well, it depends on Hermosa. Like goes, after, you know. you won, after you win Hermosa, we're going to have a podcast, and you're going to be like, bro, this is the greatest job in the world. People are going to people are gonna <laughs> look at look at my results and then pick which podcast to listen to because, uh, oh, no, this guy's coming off a loss. He's going to hate everything. <laughs> He's, He's really going to hate the qualifying series. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I think, I think it'd be really funny is if, like, Say I go like win with Pack and we just have Travis wins his first AVP. Oh yeah, we should. <laughs> Let's blow that up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love you it. Prob- you probably have uh, a yeah. here. We're going to a belated birthday dinner my in laws are taking me with on. Fogo? Yeah. Nye, love you wanna it. say hi? I <laughs> my daughter's yelling at us to get going she wants to go get some brazilian barbecue let's get you on the road i can't keep you from fogo yeah i know i'm i'm pretty lucky here good to have you back thanks brother good to be back good to have you back hi, hi naya let's naya, on naya the you want to say hi we're just signing off are you ready to go to dinner yeah where are we gonna go who are we gonna go to dinner with please daddy G- <laughs> Gigi and Daddy, yeah, yeah. Nah, right, this and is a Mama volleyball. And oh. Gigi. And who else? Papa. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Naya, did you come to practice yesterday? Yeah. And what did I do at practice? Or, what? Practice. I practiced. Yep. Do you like watching me practice? Yeah. Oh, the dog's <laughs> tied up in the <laughs> microphone. You like watching me practice? What do you yeah. do when I'm at practice? Yeah. Hmm. What is that for? This is a microphone. That's for you. So people can hear you talking. They want to know what, what you think. Should we go to dinner? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Night. How do we say bye in, uh, on the podcast? Do we say? Okay, say bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 All right. Shoots. That was Naya Bourne. <laughs> Shoots. Podcast debut.